hey! Welcome, welcome, welcome to Generation Rise, the podcast with Marcus Bell. Thank you so much, Rise family, for coming in and checking me out again today. Now listen, this past week I was really kind of struggling to figure out the topic to talk to my Rise family about this week. And I was, as I was trying to figure something out and I was spending some time just in the quiet, a thought came to me about a post-it note that I had written stuff on. Now, one of the things that I do a lot of the times is that when I hear something, whether it's in a sermon or I read something in a book or come across something in music, something that really stands out to me, I oftentimes grab a pen, grab a post-it note, and then I'll write it down and I'll put it on something that could be on the mirror in the house that could be inside of my portfolio or the book that I'm writing into somewhere. I put it down and it drives my wife nuts because I have post-it notes all over the place. Now, after I thought about this particular post-it note, like the next day I saw a video of this high school basketball player that only has one arm and the kid is killing it. I'm talking about dunking on people, crossing people over the whole nine yards. Like, yes, he has a quote unquote disadvantage by having one arm, but it's not stopping him at all. He is doing everything that he wants to do on the basketball court and better than many people that have all their limbs and things of that sort. So that brought me back to the thought of the post-it note. And on this particular post-it note, it says, anything rare is inherently valuable. Anything rare is inherently valuable. Now, I don't remember exactly where I got that line from, but I can tell you this, that a basketball player that has one arm is a pretty rare thing. Not just a basketball player, but somebody that's able to kind of dominate the game, that is able to really excel in basketball one arm is a pretty rare thing. And the reality is is that this particular kid may not play professionally. He may not even make it to college. There have been a couple of college basketball players that have had one arm that have done great things. There have been other professional athletes, a baseball pitcher comes to mind that had one arm and he pitched in the major league baseball for a long time. And there are ways to get around whatever issue, whatever disability, whatever disadvantage that you have, you can push through. But understand that while this person may not play professionally, I can tell you that his journey has value to it because his journey will reach other people. It will touch other people that may be battling through something and it will inspire other people that may be going through different things. Now, what I can also tell you and what I want you guys to know is that Rise family, you are valuable. If nobody's ever told you that, if there's something that you've never believed or never really went into because of your particular situation, whatever it is that you may be going through, you are valuable. Whatever makes you unique makes you valuable. Your gift, whatever quirk it is that you have, whatever makes you different from other people, that makes you rare which inherently makes you valuable. Your experience, your history, all of that thing, all of those things are unique to you. While they may be similar to somebody else, while they may look somewhat alike somebody else, the things that you go through on a day-to-day basis is not exactly like anybody else. God created us to all be different creatures different people, meaning that we all think differently. We all operate differently. That's why 
everybody has a unique fingerprint. There is no fingerprint that is exactly like anybody else. Even identical twins have different fingerprints. So we are all designed differently. We are all created in God's perfection. And we are all designed to leave different marks on the world. Now, what I can tell you is that oftentimes a person's value or anything's value does not truly become apparent until after it goes through a process. So sometimes you have to go through a process to really realize what your value is or what the value of a particular product is. You have to go through the process. And that process is different for every individual person. The process was different for Michael Jordan than it was for LeBron James, than it was for Kobe Bryant, Magic Johnson, Dwayne Wade, Steph Curry. The process was different for all of them because all of them have a different mix that impact and influence the way that they went about going through their journey. Now, that process for each person for whatever it is that you're trying to do, whether it's football, basketball, whether it's trying to be a singer, whether it's trying to be an engineer, architect, attorney, or be the president of the United States or a president of a company, that process could involve enduring pain, enduring heartache, overcoming a hard upbringing. And two that really kind of stand out to young people that I've seen is the process could in could mean that you have to endure facing rejection and also facing a change of direction. So here's the thing. Jesus, who's our Lord and Savior, was rejected. Jesus was rejected by his own people. Jesus couldn't do works in his hometown because they only saw him in one way. So Jesus was rejected consistently by people. That didn't stop him from going through the process so that he can do what God needed him to do for us, to sacrifice himself for our sins, right? Pretty much any professional athlete, any professional singer, CEO was rejected at some point, at some level. What makes you any different? What makes you think that you're going to go through life and not have to face rejection, not have to face obstacles, not have to overcome some things to strengthen you to where you are going? I think about a person like Serena Williams, arguably the best athlete ever. And when I say best athlete ever, I don't mean the best female athlete, the best tennis athlete, the best black athlete, white athlete. I'm talking about the best athlete ever. She is arguably one of the best athletes ever. She has been rejected in so many ways. She's been body shamed because she has a physicality that's never been seen in tennis before. She has been um, rejected because of her intensity. She's been rejected in many ways because of her dominance in the sport of tennis. She's been able to transcend tennis in so many ways between her and her sister Venus. They've transcended tennis and been so dominant that they've been able to do marketing in different ways, go into different ventures that other people have not even dreamed of in the world of tennis. And the true value of a Serena Williams will likely not be fully realized until she's long gone. It's kind of like Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali was rejected many different ways while he was in the height of his career. Muhammad Ali wasn't really shown love and adored until after he retired because he was so brash. He was so confident. He was such a polarizing figure that he was rejected by the masses during those civil rights areas, eras of the clashes between white and black people and minorities. And he spoke up for those type of things. 
but he was rejected. He wasn't really shown love until after he retired. And then he's been able to inspire not just the generation after him, but he's continuing to inspire generations to come. So his true value probably still isn't realized by now. And what I also want to tell my Rise family is that just because you have been rejected, just because you're considered an outcast or been cast out of certain circles, just because you've been looked over and passed over and so on, that does not mean that you do not have worth. Do not think that because a certain group of people don't like you, a certain people group of people are rejecting you and won't accept you, that does not mean you don't have worth. It just means that you are still going through the process so that when your value is displayed to the world, it will fit the need of that time. Everything has a divine timing. It has a divine appointment. You have to be patient enough and you have to be able to go through the process enough to see what's on the other side and to make sure that you're not too far ahead of your time so that when your time comes, it will fit the need of the time. LeBron James was not around in the NBA when Michael Jordan was because LeBron James is needed for a time like now. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, he was an activist. He did great things with the Lakers, followed by Magic Johnson, followed by Larry Bird. Then came Jordan. Jordan did things a different way. Jordan showed people that you can be a dominant athlete, but you can also be marketable in a way that reaches the masses. Then Kobe and Allen Iverson came, showed that we can be accepted for who we are. We can just be ourselves, but still excel in the sport and still be marketable and still do things in a in a different way. And then LeBron James came and now LeBron James is doing things that even beyond what any of those guys ahead of them did. And he's able to speak to the kids today and show that you can be an athlete. And show that at the same time, you can build yourself an empire by doing things in um, movies and production. He has different companies that he's doing, that he's involved in. He's able to do activism and he can speak his mind and articulate his thoughts and impact people beyond just the sport of basketball. LeBron James is for the people now. Le Michael Jordan spoke to the people at that time. You have to wait for your time so that when your value and when your gift is shared with the world, it is able to reach and connect with the people that it needs to hear what you have to say, what you have to bring to the table. So just because you're being cast out now does not mean that you don't have worth. Your worth is still being formulated, is still being cut and going through the process so that when it gets put on display, people will be able to embrace it. They will be able to identify with it. They will be able to be inspired and drawn to it. So this makes me think about diamonds, all right? Diamonds, the true worth and beauty of a diamond is not realized until it's gone through the process. I've spoken about diamonds once before. What you really need to realize is that diamonds are created through pressure in the mantle of the earth, right? So it takes pressure, an extreme amount of pressure to create a diamond, right? In the mantle of the earth. And then through different lava and volcanic eruptions and things like that, then they're kind of spewed out through the earth. Some of these diamonds have been around for millions and millions of years before they actually get to the point where they can be mined. Diamonds have to be mined, sometimes in riverbeds, sometimes they have specific uh, caves and things that are drawn up and created so that people can mine these diamonds, right? And a diamond in its raw form is really just a dull rock, right? But after this rock is retrieved and mined, then it has to go through the process of being cut with precision, and then polish. And then at that point is a diamond taken to the point where you can actually see the, the beauty of the diamond. You can see the clarity of the diamond. You can see the way that it, it, the light reflects off of it and it sparkles. And then you get that kind of feeling that a diamond and jewelry gives you. But here's a fun fact about diamonds. 
only about 20% of diamonds can really be cut and used for jewelry. That means that 80% of the world's diamonds are not used and put on display in rings and chains and necklaces and, and bracelets and watches and things of that sort. 80% of diamonds are used for other things from things in manufacturing because of the qualities of the diamond, how hard it is, how it's able to be used to cut things and, and be used for different ways. So it's used for manufacturing. It's used for industrial uses. It's actually even used in beauty products and used in sound equipment like microphones and things of that sort. So most of the diamonds in the world are not actually put on display. Most of the diamonds in the world are used for other things. So what does that tell me? That tells me that you can go through a similar process. All diamonds go through a similar process, whether they're used for jewelry or not. They have to go through the pressure. They have to be brought up from the mantle. They have to be mined. And then from there, they get cut and, and things like that. But you can go through a similar process or you can be cut from a similar cloth as somebody else, have a similar background, incur a similar process, but be created to be used for something different. Right? Right? Some of the diamonds are used for jewelry. Some are used for manufacturing. This can be applied to anything in life. You could be a great athlete, but your purpose in life may not be to play in the NFL, the NBA, the WNBA, to be a track star. You can be cut from a similar cloth and not be used for the same thing. But you can still be used to impact the world. These diamonds that are not used for jewelry still are used for things that we need and use every day. Oftentimes, the things that are not shown, that are not being broadcast and displayed, have a greater impact than their more popular versions. Okay? So you can be cut from a similar cloth and instead of being a professional athlete, maybe you're supposed to be an agent. Take a look at LeBron James and, and Rich Paul. They're best friends and LeBron James hired him to be his agent. Rich Paul played with him in high school, played basketball with him growing up in high school. Rich Paul was not created to be a professional basketball player, but now he's able to help materialize the dreams of professional basketball players by being their agent and negotiate their contracts, negotiate marketing, and to help them build their brands up to the point where they can help sustain themselves for the rest of their lives. There are talented people in sports, but some of those things that we learn and that we draw from sports are actually just to teach us the discipline that we can apply in different areas that we can apply in the world of business, that we can apply in the world of politics, that we can apply in the world of spirituality, that we can apply and impact and influence and bring other people up. So I think about a person like a Myron Roll. Myron Roll was a football player at Florida State. He played in the NFL. He ended up retiring from the NFL so that he can go on to be a neurosurgeon. Right. Maya Moore was one of the baddest NBW NBA players, college players, basketball players in the world. And she's taken she's taken a, basically a sabbatical away from the WNBA to focus on activism, to focus on prison reform, to focus on different things that impact the world in a different way than just her playing basketball. Right. Inky Johnson is one of the biggest motivational speakers in the world. I listen to him myself. He was destined. He had the athletic ability to be an NFL player. But in college, in his senior year, he got injured that paralyzed his arm. He had to take that change of direction, which I've mentioned before, to be told, no, that you're not supposed to be an NFL player. And then he's able to use his story, use his experience and motivate and inspire people all across the world. And not just in sports, his motivational speeches are given at corporate offices, at different events, different places that transcend beyond just football, transcend beyond just the sports world. Colin Kaepernick, who 
was an NFL star. He led a team to the Super Bowl. And because he chose to make a stand and take a knee to rally against racial injustices, he pretty much lost his career. But that stand that he took was able to impact and start a movement in a way. There's a saying that the first man through takes the bullet. He had to take the bullet, but the impact of what he chose to do to take a stand has been able to impact a generation that his value for doing that likely will not be truly realized for years to come. It's just like fine artwork. A lot of times an artwork, piece of art is not truly valued and not truly shown its worth until years and years down the road. Think about like pieces by Picasso and things of that sort. When he did that, he probably sold that for small amount of money, but now these things are in museums and they're worth millions and millions of dollars. So your worth is not always going to be realized as you're in the process or as you're even alive. Sometimes your worth is not going to be realize until years down the road. Inventors do it. Inventors vent something and then the true value of it doesn't come out until well after their their life is over. So realize that you have worth. Realize that you have value and your value may not be shown in the same way as somebody else's. It may not be that you're meant to be famous. It may not be that you're meant to have millions and millions of dollars, but it may mean that you're supposed to impact kids in a way that helps motivate them, that helps inspire them, that helps let them know that they can do all things, that there are no limits to the creativity that they have within them. There are no limits to what they can do. All limits that are that a person feels are self-imposed. There's no limit that we've been given that says that you can't do that. You can do anything. You can do anything through God who strengthens you. So I'm going to steal something. I'm going to leave you with this. And I'm going to steal something from Stephen Furtick, who's a pastor of, of Elevation Church. And in his sermon that I actually just listened to this past week, he said, what God is doing in and through you will look different than any of your heroes. And I'll take you back to Serena Williams. Some of her heroes were Ora Washington, Althea Gibson, Zena Garrison. These are all tennis players that came before her. And they had to fight through racial barriers to play the sport of tennis. They had to fight through different things. But their fight is completely different than the fight of Serena Williams. And because they went through the fight, ahead of her. Now she's able to build upon that fight. And now she's able to use her platform to not just be a dominant tennis player, but she's able to speak out and use her platform to fight for women's rights. She's able to fight for mother's rights because now she's a mother. She's able to fight and break down stereotypes of what a woman can do, what a woman is supposed to look like, what a woman is supposed to compete like. She's able to elevate not just herself, but tennis, elevate women, elevate people to a different level. So what God is doing in and through her does not look like her heroes, but it does not mean that it does not have value. So I heard this today on the radio and it was by a contestant on American Idol that had Tourette's that tried out for American Vital. And it says, your issue Whatever it is, whatever you think is holding you back, whatever it is that you think may not allow you to do something, whatever it is that you may feel like is rejecting you, whatever your issue is, it does not have to define you, but it is something that you can defy. Defy the odds. Defy what other people are saying. Defy what your limitation is or what you think you can't do. Defy it and go after what it is that is for you. Rise family, I'm going to encourage you to dare to be different and pursue your own destiny. 
Listen, Rise family, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining me here today. If you'd like to reach out to me, you can reach out to me on Twitter at Rise ENT and the number one on Instagram, the Rise Generation, YouTube Generation Rise. You can reach out to me on my company website and check that out at www.therisegeneration.org. I appreciate all of your feedback. I appreciate all of your comments. If you have questions, want me to talk about something, address something, please reach out to me. Let me know. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Thank you. God bless you. I love you. Now go be great.